2021 was a phenomenal year for heavy metal, but only one album can be the best. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Belgian Jasper. If this is your first time on the channel, hit subscribe right now. 2021 was a crazy year because there were a lot of delayed releases that uh, were originally meant to come out in 2020. So extra releases and you know, the quality of metal just seems to go up every year. So there's a ton of albums that were really, really good. I'm gonna give you my top 20 today um, and I'm not kidding, like when I made my first, you know, short list, uh, if I wanted to highlight all those albums, it would become a very long video. Now, I get to listen to a lot of albums and I get sent a lot of albums uh, that, you know, before I started doing this channel, I would never have received, I would never even listen to. So, um, even with that said, I can't listen to every album out there. There might be phenomenal albums that I didn't even listen to. So if your picks for best albums are not in this list, Put them in the comments and tell me about them. Um, nevertheless, I'm still going to give um, five shout outs to runners up that I had a lot of fun with this year, um, but they're just not in my top 20. In no particular order, there was Eternal Blue by Spirit Box. There was a Valediction by Obscura. There was Diorama by Mel. There was Sermons of the Sinner by KK's Priest. And then also Perpetual Chaos by Nervosa. So let's kick it off with my choice for number 20 and that is Bleed the Future by Archspire. Uh, you know, the techiest Canadian death metal masters uh, are back um, with an album that is quickly becoming a fan favorite, if not the fan favorite. On this album, a little bit more focus on songs instead of displaying skills. Don't get me wrong, the skills are still very much there. But it did result in an album that was overall freshier and also more tight. The song that you want to check out on that album is a Golden Mouth of Ruin. <laughs> Let's go to number 19 where we have Worship by Hypocrisy. The aliens are back to harvest on this phenomenal album by Nuclear Blast. Now, Peter Tagtrin um, and Hypocrisy are back from never really gone away, uh, but this is just a great album. Um, this is an album that's very diverse and you know, different generations of fans will find uh, lots of goodness in there to enjoy. Uh, a lot of great songs on this album, a lot of variety, uh, but my favorite song on the album is the opening title track, Worship. Number 18, the first record on this list by Napalm Records, we've got Ginger with Wallflowers. You know, taking even more broad influences than ever before, uh, the band definitely listened to some Gojira when making this album. Um, but uh, yeah, Ginger just establishes themselves with this album as, you know, the leader of modern extreme metal music. Um, the, the musicianship on this album, as we get to expect from Ginger by now, is absolutely phenomenal. And, you know, if you combine that with the um, eclectic uh, and powerful vocals of Tatiana. You know, it's just a winning combination. So, a great album. My favorite song on the album was one of the singles, Vortex. At the number 17, we have the Belgians Splendidula with their phenomenal third album, Somnus. You know, this album basically gives us the answer to what if the you know, a uh, classic lineup of The Gathering from the mid-90s would have created um, their best album, but right now, today. Uh, this is a really cool album that is both hauntingly beautiful and extremely challenging. It is bleak and shows desolation, but at the same time is just so powerful and beautiful. Definitely check it out. I do hope that this is the album that will, you know, launch this band you know, similar to an Amon Ra or an Oathbreaker from Belgium before. A lot of great songs on this album, but my favorite has got to be the, you know, single Somnia. Um, especially, you know, that 
that scream by Christine that chills me to the bone every single time. All right, at number 16, we've got the traditional heavy metal by Accept with Too Mean to Die. You know, Accept does on this album what we want them to do, you know, deliver another solid album with this, you know, renewed lineup that they've had now for some time. Um, and uh, yeah, Too Mean to Die is a, is a really solid album. Um, there's few surprises on this album. You know, it doesn't really challenge us like some other albums in this list, but, uh, I've had a lot of fun with this album and I just find myself going back to that album over and over and over. And I would say it's my favorite except album of the 21st century. Lots of fun songs to choose from, but uh, you know, the first single, The Undertaker, remains my favorite. No At the number 15 spot, we've got Kin by Whitechapel. Uh, the band mixes together uh, everything from death metal, metalcore, but also alternative rock music. Um, and it's a great combination. Uh, very mature band by now. And they do something that few people expected. Overpowered The Valley, uh, their previous album, which many people hailed as their best album ever. So yeah, definitely take a, a listen to this one. My favorite song of this uh, very diverse album is uh, a blood soaked symphony. All right, at the number 14 spot, we've got Stormkeep with Tales of Other Time. One of the best debut albums of the year uh, came out on Van Records. Uh, a lot of people have, you know, already talked about this band and this record because, you know, it definitely was an underground hit. Um, you know, this band brings a beautiful combo of epic black metal and adventure rock, you know, like uh, it's, it's really cool to see. Um, this band does for black metal what Visigoth has done in the last few years for heavy metal and uh, I, I'm just completely in love with it. I, it. It's phenomenal. If you're new to this band, check out their song The Serpent Stone. Going to lucky number 13, uh, another debut, and what a debut, this is Decadence and Decay by Silver Talon. Uh, this is a really cool band that brings a very modern sound that is very clearly inspired by, you know, some of uh, metal's heyday, uh, specifically like, you know, later 80s, early 90s uh, metal. And, uh, oh, it works so well. I think we're gonna hear a lot of this band, this was Without a doubt, one of the best debuts of the year. Lots of cool stuff on this album. Um, my favorite song remains As The World Burns. Something completely different at the number 12 spot. We've got Lord of the Lost with Judas. Another album by Napalm Records, and this album is a, a career-defining album for this band. Uh, it's a double concept album, it's really smart. Check out my interview with Pi of the band, you know, on this album everything just works. It all fits beautifully together, all the visual art and the music complement each other really good. Um, this band brings a ton of 80s goth influences uh, to uh, a very modern sound. Um, metal needs more you know, bands that are quite mainstream, but that are really not afraid to be bold and take risks. Um, and I think it paid off. I think they uh, did a really good job. Check them out and specifically the song For They Know Not What They Do. At the number 11 spot, um, a big discovery for me. Uh, this album was my first introduction to this band, uh, one-man band, Unrequited uh, with Beautiful Ghosts. This album uh, from Prophecy Records is just hauntingly beautiful. This is atmospheric, uh, one-man uh, post-black metal from Canada. This whole album blew me away, but you know, one song really stood out and that's Ottoman Everly. Oh, 
All right, we dive into our top 10 with an album that was very anticipated. A lot of people have spoken about it. It is In the Court of the Dragon by Trivium. So Matt Heafy is basically hated as a poser or glorified as the savior of metal. Uh, there, there seem to be very few people that don't really have an opinion that is a little bit more gray. Um, I fall more in the second category. Um, uh, is Matt and Trivium trying hard on this, you know, ambitious album? Absolutely. And, and I love them for that. You know, I want people to make an effort. I really like their, you know, ever more embrace of, you know, traditional heavy metal in their metal core. Um, it's not for everybody. And I understand that there's a bunch of purists that will never really uh, open up to uh, to Trivium, but I think that they're missing out. I think uh, Trivium has made some phenomenal albums. This album does not um, come to the level that uh, an In Waves was for me, uh, which I think is still their best album. Uh, but this is a really well executed album. Um, looks gorgeous too. And uh, if you want to check out, you know, my favorite song, I think it still is the title track in the Court of the Dragon. <laughs> At number nine, my favorite thrash album of the year, which had to be Exodus Persona Non Grata. Yeah, there were a lot of cool thrash releases this year and I could have chosen a cool new band or a little bit more of an underground release. But you know what? Uh, I think that Exodus with this album showed the world what a good thrash album looks like. Um, this is a really cool album. I think it's my favorite Exodus album of the 2000s. And uh, what I like about it is that uh, it is quite diverse and there's a couple of surprises in there. Um, and I think that the band did a really good job. Um, it's still evil as fuck. Uh, and uh, you know, it, it has every element that we want from an Exodus record. But uh, I do like the variety, uh, especially one of those surprise songs uh, is my favorite, which would be The Years of Death and Dying. <laughs> At number eight, we have The Pretty Reckless with Death by Rock and Roll. I think that with this album, Taylor Mumson shows all the haters and all the gatekeepers and all the posers that, you know, she really is a leading lady of modern hard rock. Um, this is a great album and Taylor sounds phenomenal on this album. This album is by far the best album of the Pretty Reckless. And I know people go like, oh Jasper, you're wearing a Mayhem shirt, you've got battle vests with a bunch of thrash metal patches. How dare you like the Pretty Reckless? Well, I think it's a really, really good album. Uh, great songs on there. Uh, the title track is good, uh, 25 is good, but the absolute song on this album is And So It Went. Don't belong to you. It belongs to me. Something completely different at the number seven spot. Uh, Der Weg eine Freiheit with Nocturne. And uh, this album is just so hauntingly beautiful. Uh, the uh, uh, avant garde black metal um, of uh, Der Weg eine Freiheit continues to. Uh, amaze me and inspire me and surprise me. Uh, this is an eclectic album uh, and you know the album just takes you on this phenomenal journey. A really well executed album and if you want to check it out I think you should listen to the song Morgen. Alright let's go back to Nuclear Blast the number six spot. We've got the self-titled Glorious album by Halloween. Well, what can we say? This was one of the most anticipated albums of the year and it delivered. What was really cool about this album was that the band really takes all the best elements of all the different stages of Halloween and bring it all together with three singers, even people that are not fans of happy power metal. Um, you know, it's really hard not to start headbanging to this album with a big smile on your face. Um, lots of cool songs in there, but you know, my favorite remains uh, the single Skyfall. Hey, 
Back to season of Mist for the number 5 spot, we've got Vadak by Dai Katafal. You know, in a crazy discography, uh, this album might be my favorite uh, by the avant-garde, uh, formerly black metal mastermind. I am never going to be able to pronounce the name of my favorite song on this album, but I will give it a try with Kashant Ahainal. All right, uh, we stay at Season of Mist uh, for my number four pick, uh, which is the Tritonia spell by Hooded Menace. I mean, come on, Judas Priest inspired Death Doom? That is just such a fun cocktail. Um, I really like this album. Uh, this is one of those bands that has been growing and growing in the underground. And I think that this really was the year that a lot of people really got to know Hooded Menace. Um, I think this is an album you'll find on many people's uh, lists for album of the year. Great, great album. My favorite song on the album is Blood Ornaments. All right, we are at the top three. And which album gets my bronze medal? Well, for that, we go to Nuclear Blast um, for Witch of the North by Burning Witches. So this album by the all-female powerhouse of heavy metal that Burning Witches has become over the years, uh, it, I've had so much fun with it. You still hear people say that, oh, you know, this band gets a lot of attention because it's five gorgeous women and they are beautiful women, there's no denying uh, in that. But I think it's time that we park that excuse now because um, I just really disagree with that. Um, this is an album that I've had a lot of fun with this year. I find myself going back to over and over again. There's a lot of cool songs on this album and for me it was a bit of a struggle. Um, I really love um, We Stand As One, but at the end of the day, um, Flight of the Valkyries is just, you know, my favorite track. All right, for my silver medal, we stay at Nuclear Blast for Eza Holopainen's Silver Lake. And it's by a fluke that, you know, the silver medal goes to a band called Silver Lake. Well, I mean, this is the solo project of Esa Holopainen, who is the guitar master of Amorphis. And um, what's really cool for his debut solo album is it doesn't sound like a solo album by a famous guitarist. Uh, you know, those albums tend to be filled with overblown guitar solos, and uh, that's not the case here at all. There's really good and subtle guitar work in this album, but uh, Esa really you know, lets the songs and the singers shine. You know, I love the song Ray of Light, but um, yeah, Storm was uh, one of my most played songs of 2021. So that has to be my pick. All right, we are at the number one spot. And uh, guess what? It is a clean sweep for Nuclear Blast because uh, the number one album of the year for me um, is Omega by Epica. Well, what can we say? Epica is one of those bands that just gets better and better and better. Uh, Omega is a career highlight for the Dutch-Belgian symphonic metal giants. Every musician in this band is out of this world, but they come together in such a unit um, the songwriting is great on this album, but then obviously, you know, the singing of Simone uh, remains a force to be reckoned with. She is one of the absolute greatest um, metal singers of all time. And uh, yeah, this is such a good album. It's such a good album. And everything works and every detail is so well done. Um, and it has catapulted Epica to a whole new level. A lot of good songs in this album. My favorite song remains the first single, Abyss of Time. Okay, that was my countdown for the top 20 albums of 2021, and I will see you soon for a new video. Stay metal. You are awesome for watching this video. Click right here to see more content like it, and subscribe to the channel.